Hello out there, it's Peter again and today I want to give you a small comparison about two iconic 6x6 cameras, about the Rollerflex and the Hasselblad. I know this may seem like an apples to oranges comparison to some of you, but uh, I think uh, that, both, that both systems are pretty comparable in some points and that lots of people are interested in both systems and they often get compared in the uh, in certain forums. The sound is pretty crappy today because I didn't have uh, enough time to set up my audio system and that's because I'm going to sell the Hasselblad tomorrow and I got my Rollerflex today, it came back today from a recent CLA and the reason why I'm selling the Hasselblad tomorrow is that it isn't the right camera for me. And for my style of shooting, um, the Rollerflex just is the camera I, I'm using the most apart from my Leica and I'm enjoying the most and that fits best in my hands. So let's look at some reasons why, at least for me, um, the Rollerflex is in fact the better 6x6 system. Okay, so let's start off with the dimensions of the camera. As you can see, the um, orientation of both cameras is completely different. While the um, Rollerflex is held upright, vertical, um, the Hasselblad is held um, in a horizontal orientation. Um, and another thing you see is that the um, Hasselblad is bigger. I know that this is uh, not the biggest Rollerflex, it's in fact the uh, 3.5F. Um, the 2.8F is in fact a bit bigger and heavier, but not by much. Um, so um, the um, Hasselblad remains the bigger, the bigger camera. Let's turn it on the side. So okay, so it's not it's not much, but here you can see that the. Um, the Hasselblad is in fact the bigger camera, yeah. And if you put on the uh, the lens hood, it becomes a lot bigger. The lens hood for the um, 80 mm planner is about this big, and um, there is a lens hood for the um, um, Rollerflex too, but it's only about this size, so it's way bigger with the hood. So in terms of size, um, the Rollerflex is the smaller camera. Um, when we compare the weight of both cameras, you feel that the uh, Hasselblad feels heavier. Let's check how this translates into um, into kilograms. So this weighs actually um, 1.45 kilograms. As I said, with the magazine, with the uh, standard viewfinder, and with the planner lens, and the Olaflex weights um, about. 1.16 kilograms so it's quite a bit lighter actually and you feel it when you carry it around the whole day the the roller flex is in my opinion easier to carry than the than the Hasselblad so that's a first comparison um, the roller flex is the lighter camera and the smaller camera but it has a completely um, different orientation than the than the Hasselblad. It's orientated vertically and the Hasselblad is orientated um, horizontally. So the second thing we're looking at is the build quality of the cameras. Um, both are very well known for their um, build quality. This is made in Germany. It's from the um, late 50s or early, early 60s I think and this is made in Sweden and both are very very well built. In my opinion this one feels a bit um, chunkier, it feels a bit um, heavier, it weights more obviously but it feels, um, you know, the, the sound is different, it's, it's more, um, you know, if you compare it to instruments, this is perhaps, it's a bass and this is a guitar, yeah. it's. Um, it feels this one feels very precise, but very a bit delicate perhaps. And this one feels precise too, but um, very um, very hefty. So, in terms of build quality, they're both very very good cameras. Actually, they both feel very smooth. Focusing of the 
roller flex is very smooth you focus it with uh, this wheel here yeah the the shutter sound is very very quiet I will talk to that later about that later the camera feels very 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 um, precise like a, like a good watch well this one here feels very good too but it's um, it feels very massive you know the, the shutter sound alone is very robust and very uh, strong but um, I think although they are both very well made I, I think I wouldn't go on a long trip with this one because um, in my opinion there are several parts on the camera that are very delicate for example uh, if you change magazines you have this um, this this flap around here and you must be very careful not to touch it I think and it can be touched very easily and because this is a modular camera you can swap all those uh, things like the viewfinder and the lens there are more parts you shouldn't touch and there are more parts that um, are exposed to certain external influences so what I'm saying now is probably not scientifically uh, proven but uh, to me this this one feels more secure because it's, it's a closed system you can't exchange anything you, uh, apart from the from the uh, viewfinder uh, you can't exchange the back you can't exchange lenses you can't exchange the uh, the winder for example and this is a modular camera so um, there are lots of parts that get exposed when you when you change anything so um, I'm always a bit more careful when I use this camera than with this one so the next thing we're talking about is the operation of both cameras as I previously said this is um, a camera that you um, uh, hold in a um, horizontal way so you hold it like this this is the first thing that was very very uh, strange for me at the beginning because um, I'm used to uh, focusing with my um, with my left hand actually but the, the classic has uh, the classic way to hold a Hasselblad is in fact you hold it with your left hand turn it around uh, you trip the shutter with your uh, index finger and you focus with your right hand and when you're doing so you have a very stable uh, hold of the camera but for me it felt always a bit clumsy because as I said I'm used to uh, do it the other way around to focus with my left camera uh, with my left hand sorry um, so um, when you use this camera you have to um, first you have to remember to take off the dark slide so that's the first thing you have to remember then you always should cock the shutter because if you don't and you take apart something for example the lens or the the back um, the Hasselblad can jam quite easily so the next thing you will notice is um, that when you're used to um, for example Leica or Minolta or uh, Canon SLRs or cameras rangefinder cameras um, that the um, the scales are um, they go in, diff in a different direction now while this isn't a big issue for uh, people who use Nikon uh, for me it was a very big issue at the beginning and um, another thing I noticed that the focus throw of the uh, planar lens is very very long so you have to turn the wheel and turn the wheel in order to uh, focus this camera and this this is one of the biggest points that uh, led me to my decision to sell this camera actually because I find it very very hard to focus because of the focusing throw and because of the of the viewfinder but I talk about this later so uh, okay you hold the camera like this you look through the viewfinder focus and uh, press the shutter this was very long actually and you have to remember not to release the shutter until the shutter in the in the front closes because otherwise the auxiliary um, flap in the back would close and then you would ruin your picture so in a nutshell um, you have to think really you have to concentrate when you take a picture with this camera it's it's a studio camera and this is what it's known for actually but 
for me it's it's quite clumsy actually while the uh, the the roller flex you just open the shutter focus with this head you hold it like this that's the i think the best way to hold it then you can turn it with the uh, thumb and the index finger and when you're focused the camera oops sorry i have to crank it you push the shutter and then you take a picture and that's all the operation is in my opinion way way easier on this one okay one more thing about the operation of the camera uh, the way you insert your film is in my opinion quite tricky too because uh, you have to um, pull it out. you have to remember to um, to uh, turn the lever so that this little uh, hook here is is raised because this uh, holds the film flat and if you forget to do it I think you get uh, problems with film flatness however there is one thing that you have to remember on the uh, Rolex too because whenever you insert a film in, in this camera you have to uh, remember that you have to put the film through this uh, rollers here because this a roller here detects uh, the, the start of the film. If you forget to do so, um, the camera just uh, winds and winds and nothing, nothing happens actually. But for me, film loading on a Rollerflex is way easier than on the Hasselblad. Okay, so let's talk about the hand holdability of the camera. I know that this one is made for the studio. And I'm not uh, this kind of photographer who uh, goes into a studio and uses uh, strobes. If you release the shutter, it, it gives you a fairly good amount of, of, um, of wax. You can uh, feel the, the vibration of the, of the mirror who's, who's raising. And um, I can hand hold this camera to about a sixtieth of a second. But not more. Then it's becoming critical, and then I get some uh, some blurry pictures. So um, for hand holdability, you can hold this thing actually quite well, but um, the vibration is, at least for me, too much. I managed to get uh, pictures, really good pictures, um, with a fifteenth of a second with this one because there's almost no vibration with the shutter. Um, it's just the the leaf shutter that's closing and opening. There's no mirror slap and nothing, and um, it's very quiet too. That's it. And with this one, you basically feel the whole thing, the vibration of the whole thing. And one other thing that really, really um, disturbs me is that you, um, when you take a picture, the uh, the mirror. I don't know if you can see it. Hold the camera. Let's zoom it in. Oops, sorry. Okay, so when I take a picture now, you can see that the uh, that the mirror actually stays in the closed position, so you can't see anything until you wind the film. And I prefer to um, to wind my film just before I take the shot because um, so I I'm avoiding film flatness problems, and I make sure that the film is always under under certain tension. And with this one. You can always you always have a have an image when you look through the viewfinder, no matter if the the camera is cocked or not, the shutter is cocked or not. And this is a big plus for me for this camera that you can always see what you are doing. So there is one point where the uh, where the Hasselblad really shines, and this is, in my opinion, the picture quality, the, the quality of the lens, and um, the sharpness of the lens too. Um, I've used it several times wide open with the uh, 2.8 uh, aperture and they're actually very very sharp the pictures I can get even wide open so um, I never hesitate to, to use this one wide open while I always try to um, um, stop this down at least half a stop I think this is this is a bit sharper than this one I think because it's newer it has a special coating, it has the T-coating, and in my opinion, or as far as I know, this one hasn't this kind of coating. I'm not sure whether the um, uh, 2.8F has a better lens, but um, this one is very, very sharp too, actually. But um, 
I think if you use it wide open, then um, this one has, has a slight edge over this one. The other big advantage of the um, of the Hasselblad when compared to the Rollerflex is its flexibility. This is a completely modular system. You can take almost everything off. You can take off the uh, the lens. Do this. Oh. You can take this off. Yeah. You can take away. Uh, uh, you can take off the back. You can take off the um, the viewfinder. You can, you can take off the uh, the winder itself. You can put certain uh, things on on this rail here. You have se several different um, screens. Um, and from the Rollerflex, the only thing that that you can uh, that you can exchange on this one is the um, is the um, the screen and the finder. Actually, there are certain accessories for the um, for the Rollerflex. You can use uh, filters, you can use um, close-up lenses on this one, and of course a hood. But in terms of flexibility, this is, the, uh, is a very powerful system. And obviously this one is a fixed prime lens, while you have a very, very wide range of lenses on the Hasselblad. But for me, um, I almost always use a 50mm lens. And this is a 75 mm, which is around 50 mm in um, uh, in uh, full frame or 35 mm. Um, so this is about the only lens I, I ever use on the on the Rollerflex, and the the Planner 80 mm is the uh, the only lens I use on the Hasselblad. So I'm someone who almost exclusively uses one lens. So um, this is this is overkill for me. This camera is the perfect match for me. It's light, it's um, it's flexible, it has a very good image quality. This one may be a bit better, but it's still very good. So um, the Hasselblad is simply too much for me and this is one reason I'm selling it. Another big reason I'm selling it is because of the focusing. I've always had difficulties to focus with the Hasselblad every time. I've used several screens. This one has the Equipment D screen built in or it had the screen built in and while it's very very bright I find it very difficult to precisely focus on this. You know um, I, the screen itself is very good but um, um, you can't determine whether something is in the correct focal point or not. I'll try to demonstrate it. I'm not sure if it works now. Oops, I have to pull the focus, sorry. So, I'm not sure if it works, but I'm, I'm showing you. So the transition be between um, the sharp and the uh, soft parts of the image is actually very, very smooth. And uh, this smoothness leads to, um, or has led me to several missed focus shots because it was very difficult to determine whether was uh, something wasn't focused or not. So, um, with the Rollerflex on the other hand, I put, um, I think it's called High D um, screen in this one. And I think it's a bit brighter too. And for me it's, it's a lot easier to focus with this one. The transition between the, the soft and the um, sharp parts of the pictures are, in my opinion, better. And clearer than on the Hasselblad so for me it's it's quite easy to focus with this one so apart from the screen um, as I said earlier the long focus throw of the lens is actually very um, it isn't necessary in my opinion um, I think they made it because of the um, um, of the precise focusing or they want you to uh, be able to focus very precisely but it's very cumbersome and very slow actually um, and as you can see there's a very big difference bec between this movement and this movement it's between 1.5 and 1.7 meters it's yeah 20 centimeters and um, but these this area actually looks pretty similar on the screen so I cannot decide whether the, my picture is in focus 
on this point or on this point, but it's a huge difference in, in the final picture. Um, your focus is going to be way off if, you, um, if your subject is 1.5 meters away from you, but uh, you focus on 1.7 meters. But it's very hard to determine on the, on the screen whether um, uh, you've got the right focusing point or not. So in a nutshell, for my style of photography, um, the Rolleiflex is the better camera. Of course, the Hasselblad is a very, very good camera too. It's, it's very, its build quality is very good. It has a spectacular lens. It feels very solid and very good. Um, it has a very good sound. Um, the viewfinder is very bright, although quite hard to focus. Its operation can feel a bit cumbersome, but I guess that's the price you have to pay for this uh, for its flexibility you can exchange almost everything with this camera um, and uh, on the opposite this is a closed system you can't you can't exchange anything it has a fixed fixed lens which is very good but um, it's a smaller camera it's a lighter camera than the Hasselblad it has a very good viewfinder too at least with my um, custom screen I think the stock screens are quite a bit dark but with a custom screen, um, it's very bright and very, very easy to focus. The shutter has a very small amount of vibration, so it's very good for, for hand holding, for going to the street or on longer trips. And this is a camera that is suited best in the studio for a professional photographer in the studio who uses strobes and um, who, yeah, perhaps leave this on a leaves this on a tripod. So I. I hope you find this one useful. Um, I'm not saying that this is the cam this is a bad camera, not at all. This is a very very good camera, but it's not the right tool for me. So please bear that in mind when you're writing your comments and um, yeah. But I'm sure that if you like shooting inside a studio, you will enjoy this camera very much. But if you uh, liked to take a camera outside, to go on longer trips with the camera, to go on the streets, in the streets with the camera, I think this may be the better camera for you. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.